Welcome to Old Iron Machine Works. Uh, this video will be just some valve repair on a smaller Ingersoll RAND compressor. Uh, I do an awful lot of valve repair. Uh, this is a model 2545. It just has the reed style valves in it. And the customer uh, complained it wasn't uh, building pressure up. You know, so one of our uh, one of our field guys went ahead and pulled the the heads off and brought them in and in the video you'll see they were uh, pretty bad shape and a couple broken ones generally if you don't if you're not making pressure you're gonna have problems in the second stage first stage is pretty forgiving uh, if you have a problem at first stage you can generally still pump and build pressure it just takes longer but once you have valves go out in the uh, second stage you're pretty well done this particular unit I don't think it's ever been serviced as far as the valves, changing valves in over 20 years. I know that. But anyway, this video will just be the uh, repairing of these of these valves. These little fingers here, all they do is just give a little bit more pressure when they go up against the main reed valves. Just help them uh, stay closed a little bit better. Here's what's left of the bolt, uh, taking it apart, the head just twisted right off. So now I'm just grinding a couple flat spots where I can get on it with some vice grips. And I'll have to end up heating this one up a little bit and then it comes right out. The number one best thing that somebody could have in removing broken bolts is patience. Um, there's no one uh, certain trick that works for all of them. I have many, many different uh, ways I go approach uh, removing a broken bolt, bed, whatever it may be. You know, but here I'm uh, putting some heat on it. These plates are not hard in any way, so you don't really have to worry about you know taking the temper out of anything. So that's definitely when that heat is definitely your friend. This one ended up coming out uh, real easy. Um, as you can see in the video, the next one I come across is going to be a little more challenging. Well, there's the head that I twisted off of the bolt. Well, here you can see the sealing areas that seal up against the reed valves. Yeah, they look pretty crusty, but I'm pretty confident these have never been apart in over 20 years. You know, so whatever little oil it pumps to the top, it just gets cooked right into the uh, the head. Here you can see one broken, and it's absolutely up underneath one of the other reed valves.
Well, here, here you can see another twisted off one. Uh, these are only three millimeters. They're really small. And it doesn't take much at all for the heads to, to twist off of them. So this one will be a little bit more challenging getting out. Now on these really small screws, when you heat them up, try to let them cool just enough before you try to start working it. Otherwise, they'll twist right off. You don't even hardly know it. And there's times, too, that just heating it up one time is not going to do the trick. Sometimes let it cool down a little bit and then heat her back up again. And, you know, definitely helps. Now we're going to do a little tapping on it and try to help break it loose. <laughs> she tried to break off. Okay, we're making progress now. We're finally getting it broke loose. You can see right there, movement. Oh yeah, we got this one in the bag. 
or maybe I spoke too soon. Oops. <laughs> I guess in all the excitement, I still twisted it off. Yeah, it's pretty easy at this point. You know, once I already knew I had it loose, I just got a bit that just fits right through the hole. And I uh, just start drilling it until it finally, you know, that little bit at the end, it'll just screw it right out. I'll point out this is not a left-handed bit. I do not want it to back out, pulling it out. I want to drill it all the way, spin it all the way through and out to the bottom. Now it's time to go digging that little shiny spot right there. That's what's left of the stud, but I guess I could have blew some of the dust and dirt off of the block before I used it. But anyway, that's what's left of it. Well, here's the headset. It pretty much comes with all the uh, all the reed valves, all the shims, spacers, uh, bolts, nuts, gaskets, O-rings. Well, if you watch my videos, you know I'm a big fan of Loctite. And these nuts, the last thing you want is those nuts coming loose and going in the cylinder and banging around can definitely ruin your day um, here just kind of torquing them by hand and once again you got to be pretty careful because <laughs> you can twist them up pretty easy if you over tighten them Here we're back to the second stage valves. Just putting the little uh, three millimeter nuts on the bolts. Here showing the gasket that goes between the head and the valve plate and then you have another one between the valve plate and the cylinder.
and here's everything back together, ready to go bolt back onto the cylinder, the uh, cylinders. Originally, I thought this content would be in one of my old iron tidbits videos, but uh, after looking at it, I realized that it's big enough to just be a standalone video. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, thank you to all my new subscribers. If you like this kind of content, uh, give me a thumbs up. Uh, if you're not a subscriber, hit the subscribe button. And once again, I appreciate you taking the time to check out my videos.